going to need two of these squares. Now I've worked in several different types of worsted weight yarn. Um, most of mine is from the Dollar Tree, honestly, and like this um, crafter square that I've made for the center of this and for the body of my slipper. And then I've used their Just Yarn Worsted for the rest of these colors. So just grab you some worsted weight yarn in four colors. And a size I, 5.5 millimeter hook. You're going to need that for the entire project. The pattern for this particular square is already a separate video, so I'm going to link this below. But you will need to make two of these for the top of your slipper. This is sewn in. I'll show you how. We start at the toe, work our way down, and then we'll leave an opening for our square and finish the rest of the slipper. And then we'll come back and work this in. We'll just sew it in and then work single crochet around the top and this slipper will be done. It's an easy project and it's going to spring you with these colors, but it'll keep your feet warm in the air conditioning if you're like me. So are you ready? Let's get started. We're going to begin with the magic ring in the color you want the body of your slipper to be. Grab the yarn end in your palm, make an X on your index finger and hold it with your middle finger. Now reach underneath this first strand and pull the second strand up. Remove your finger, grab the working yarn, leaving that tail intact, and chain three. This will count as our first double crochet. And now we're going to work seven more double crochet into this ring, working over both of these strands. So if you've never worked a double crochet before, you yarn over, insert in the, the loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two again. So we're going to work until there's eight total stitches counting this. So you'll do the chain three and seven more double crochet right here in the ring. So go ahead and do the rest of your double crochets and we'll come back together and do the next round. All right, here are my eight stitches, including my turning chain. And I'm gonna pull my little tail tightly. See how that closed it up? And now I'm going to want to slip stitch in the top of my turning chain. So go ahead and put it underneath these two and that completes our first round. This will even out a little bit. This little space evens out a bit as you keep working and I'll show you a trick if you want to not use the chain three. Typically I don't use a chain three very often. I do have it in the written pattern but I'm going to show you a trick if you want to use the chainless double crochet. You can use the chain three here instead if you want to use a chainless double crochet, you lift it up to twice of your hook height, hold it with your index finger, the hook comes towards you, and around, yarn over, pull it behind that first loop, yarn over, and pull through the remaining two. That way when you come back, you can actually work into this V, and it's a little bit easier than working into a chain three. But if you find this difficult, Go ahead and use the chain three. It does not make a whole bunch of a difference. It just, to me, it helps hide it a little bit better. And personally, I hate <laughs> like doing the slip stitch like you just saw into a chain three because mine tend to get a little tight. All right, we've got that here and go ahead and double crochet into this stitch right here. Oh, oh. All right, so we're going to double crochet into the same stitch. So this is a little tricky since I did use my chain three and mine get tight. Like I said, 
Sometimes I have to use my fingernail to get them in there. All right, so the same stitch. Now that's two in the same space. Ignore my little thing there I messed up. And then work two double crochet in each one of these stitches around and you should have 16 stitches total at the end. And then go ahead and join right here with a slip stitch. Now we're gonna use the same technique here to increase. We worked eight, and then we double crocheted two in each stitch, so we doubled, we have 16. Now every time we work, we'll increase a little bit, but it'll get further apart. So for our next one, you'll chain three or do your chainless. And then work two double crochet in the next stitch. And you'll repeat that around. One double crochet here, two double crochet. One double crochet, two double crochet. On the next round, it increases, spaces out a little bit more. So you'll work two double crochets, like just one here and then one here, and then increase with two in the same stitch. It does vary a bit based on what size you're making. So please see the written pattern for your size because they're slightly different. I'm making the medium size here because I have a size nine foot. Um, thanks to having kids, my feet grew a bit, and so I have to make a nine now. But you will end up with 30 stitches for the smallest, 32 for the medium, and 34 for the large. So check out that part, get your right stitch count, and then work even just, you know, chain three or chainless, and then double crochet in each stitch around for your, what's called the expansion rounds. And then we'll come back together and work the slipper foot. Once you get the toe of the slipper made, it's time to start working back and forth in rows. And this will form the bottom of the slipper. So see here where I've worked my rounds and now I have stopped. We're gonna leave 12 stitches for each size unworked on the top where we can come in and put our square. So we're just gonna work across the top in rows, just in double crochet and then we'll turn. So chain three or use your chainless like this. And in the next stitches, you're gonna work all the way until there's only 12 left. So this is gonna be 17 more stitches for the small size, 19 for the medium size, which is what I'm making, and then 21 stitches for the largest size. And then there'll be 12 stitches across here on the top, waiting for our square. Then you're gonna work until you have 12 rows for the smallest size, 14 for the medium, and 16 for the largest size, just chaining or working a chainless and double crocheting in each. And at the end of each row, of course, you will turn and work back. So we're just going back and forth. So you can see it here. That I went from these rounds and then you can see the texture changes a little as you work back and forth and this will get us to this point right here where we'll be able to join this make our you know do our seam and then we'll put our square in and we are almost done so go ahead and work your rows back and forth depending on the size you're making and we'll come back together and I'll show you how to finish this up all right, I finished my slipper here. And yes, I you can see I ran out of yarn. <laughs> I've made a lot of those squares um, right here and used up my skein and it's from the Dollar Tree and I'm not sure where I can get some more. So I just went ahead and used a different color for our tutorial. So we're going to close up the back. So go ahead and grab a yarn needle and leave a long tail after you fasten off. We're going to use the mattress stitch here and it's really easy because you can see our stitches. So I'm going to go in here with the first and get closer and just come up into the stitch. First one's a little bit trickier there. Pull it tight 
We can go in. There we go. And you just go back and forth. Like now I'll go around this next stitch, just around the little single crochet, uh, the post, not single crochet, the top of the double crochet. And the same one on the other side. And when you do it like this, it doesn't leave a really big seam because I've I've also done where I've slip stitched it together. I like can turn it inside out and slip stitched and that was okay, but it does leave a seam on the back of your foot, which isn't really that comfy. So I found that I prefer to just do this. This is something that it's very common and I do it as I was a knitter before I was a crocheter, so knitters use the mattress stitch a lot. Oops. And crocheters too. So just go back and forth all the way down to the end and then you just weave in that end and that part will be done. All right, now we need to sew in our square. You can see there's a huge opening for our foot here. And here is my finished seam. I just wove in the ends down here and that's the back of our slipper. And now we're ready to attach this right here. As you can see, it should match up pretty well with the 12 stitches that you've got right there. So I've got some yarn here. I saved a little bit of this color yarn before I ran out. And I like to start in the front at the corner. I know this means I'll have to come back to this side right here, but we're gonna use the same stitch, the matcher stitch, right here. So I'm gonna come in to my corner and I'm gonna leave, you know, a bit of a tail for weaving in. And I'm gonna do exactly what I did before. Now, you may be able to, if you want to, start up here and work your way all the way around. If you, you know, pin it in place maybe. But I guess I'm lazy, I don't know, but I don't usually do that. So for me, it was just easier to do this and weave in a couple extra ends. But whatever works for you is the right thing to do. Okay, there's no real, you know, perfect right or wrong sometimes with crochet and even sometimes, you know, little stitch counts and stuff. You can kind of fudge it and it works out fine. So it's not set in stone. So you just go through here doing the same thing, taking a little bit of one side, a little bit of the next side, and you'll work your way all the way around. Grab my one that's done here and show you. So what I did here was I went across and then I went up the side and then I came back down this side right here with a different yarn. You will have these little holes here because that's just the nature of the square. So you can see we have a hole and that's just part of it. That's okay. And then the last thing you're going to do is you're going to join your yarn back here and do single crochet evenly around. See my single crochet stitches there? Now, when I got here to the corner, I single crocheted two together. So that's why it goes in here and then here in the corner. So single crochet two together there, work evenly across the top of your square, single crochet two together over here, and then around to the back, you join it. There's my little join right there. And then weave it in. And that, my friends, is it. Looks a little funny like this. I like it much better on my foot. But that's the easy square slippers. So I hope you've enjoyed this free pattern. Come visit us at lovelifeyarn.com for more than 200 free patterns. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.